Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of Redefine Show for Adorama TV, I speak with fine art portrait photographer Brooke Shaden about how she based so much of her fine art work around self-portraits and why that became so important, not only to her incredibly well-received pieces, but also to her own self. Pretty interesting stuff. Check it out. Adorama TV presents The Redefine Show with Tamara Lackey. Hi, Brooke, how are you? Oh, wonderful, how are you? Good, thank you for taking, you just got in from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Yeah, I'm not even ago. sure if my car is towed or not. We're gonna find out. <laughs> you just, you literally, because we had this time it. set. Yeah. But you were coming from LA. Yeah. Were you speeding? Was. You were speeding. I was you? not. I am the safest driver. You would be so proud of me. That's why I got here right on time. So you, you timed it all perfectly. <laughs> yes. You got in the parking lot and then you raced up to the suite. Yes, but to me, I'm late because I'm chronically early for everything. Ah, okay. Because yeah. you came in apologizing and we're like, you're exactly on time. I know. I realized that after I started apologizing, <laughs> but it just it's a natural thing. That's funny. Um, so we're friends, which yes. I'm very grateful for. Me too. And, um, and I've seen your work like from a while ago progress and, and one of the big things that's so interesting about your work. Well, your work is interesting, Thank like you. unique and stands out and beautiful. You started out shooting self-portraits so you could do them and control them and yes. make the story you wanted to by using yourself as the model. Yes. Um, but it's kind of deepened along the way. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, you know, when I started, I, I came from a film background, so I was very much in this mindset of anything that I want to do has to be done with five, at least five other people who are directly getting their hands in it and changing it right. a little bit. And so when I got out of film school, it was kind of like a fresh of breath of fresh air. I was like, you know what? I can do whatever I want. I don't have to hire a model. I don't have to have somebody light this scene for me. So I just started doing everything from these, you know, setting up cheap lights to being the person in front of the camera and doing the editing and everything. And like everything. Everything. And I loved it. So I, I didn't have to leave my house, which was awesome because I was so antisocial that it was like, I can stay right here where I want right. to be and do everything. And, and then I started to realize after sharing my work with more and more people that it's an interesting component to work to be a self-portrait artist. And I never really thought about it. It was just something that I did because it was fun and it was easy and yeah. I liked it. And I started realizing that the more you create self-portraits, the more you are sort of creating a character for yourself and not just doing that, but giving other people permission to create characters for themselves and really become comfortable with who you are. Mm -hmm. And I love that idea that you can be who you want to be through art. And I don't think that a lot of people have that freedom in their lives to just be whoever they want to be and yes. to discover who their best self is. Right. So I became kind of obsessed with that idea of saying, well, okay, I have a way of sort of an outlet for myself to be who I want to be and do what I want to do. And why not use that to encourage others and not just to do it because it's fun or because I have control, but because it heightens the art in some way to be able to see the artist as a character and as the creator. And various characters. Not oh, just yeah. you're not just Brooke Shaden, you're also this deep, like darkly tormented yeah. character and you're this like flea like I, I, I would perceive um, kind of fleeing and free and flowing and you kind of have this whole range of characters. Exactly. And this for me was really important to discover. I When I started, I would always say to people, well, the characters I'm portraying have nothing to do with me, like totally separate. I'm, I'm so, happy. I'm good. Right. I'm like, I'm happy. I'm not a creepy person. You're going <laughs> to like me, I swear. And, and then it, it became sort of this metamorphosis of saying, whoa, actually they're exactly me like that is who These i am components. exactly and it's it's about really finding that deeper self i guess it, you know at first you're doing these self portraits and you're saying oh that's not me that's not me but you're like of course it is it's it's the deepest part of you it's the part that is so much you that mm -hmm. that's what comes out when you begin creating and i right. think that's our truest self so and a lot it's of very parts interesting that we spend time hiding oh exactly yeah. and i love that because it's about being vulnerable and asking yourself well who are you really mm -hmm. and how can you portray that and it might feel like you're looking at a different person in the end when you create that type of art but really it's just it's who maybe you don't want to acknowledge or who you've Never bothered to acknowledge before. Right, which ties in beautifully to this, uh, yes. this tattoo that says fear is the mind killer yes. and positioned so that you can read it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's from my favorite um, book series, Dune by Frank Herbert. It's a science fiction series. And um, and when I read that line, I've always had major issues with fear from like fear of death to just like fear that there's a monster under my bed, just ridiculous things. And 
And one day I just said to myself, this is getting crazy. I mean, I, I'm scared to sleep by myself at night and things that an 18 year old shouldn't have to think about. Right. And, and then I said, if, if it's this bad now, then it's never gonna get better as an adult because all I've seen in my life from adults is that they develop more and more fear as they get older and I didn't wanna be like that. Isn't that interesting? Because you would think exactly. that growth is the shedding of these neuroses and the right. anxiety. <laughs> but really the fears just become deeper and more serious. I yeah, think. because and also part of it is that you over time witness more of how bad yeah. things can be and, and then life. it creeps in. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's such an effort to push it out. And then your, your, so your work, looking at your work, um, it, there's a lot of uh, squares yes. in the composition. What is that all about? So I, when I started photography, I actually hated it. Like I took a class in high school and didn't do well in it and didn't enjoy the class and was kind of like, I'm never gonna do this again. I hate photography, it's not for me. And so that I went into filmmaking immediately after and I thought, well, filmmaking is fun because I can do whatever I want and I can, you know, it's just, I don't know, more freeing for me. So when I went into filmmaking, I said, I'm never going to do photography ever again. I don't like it as a medium. I'm not gonna do anything else. So I started writing, making films. But when I got out of college, I sort of went back to photography because I had been majoring in film, um, creative writing, and uh, literature. And I'd been doing so much of that that I was like, let's revisit this other art form. And I did. I still didn't love it. And so I thought, well, I love painting, and I love sketches, and I love all these other art forms. So maybe if I just get rid of that two to three ratio that a standard photograph has, then I won't see the photograph so much. And it won't bother me that I don't actually like this art form as much. So I decided reinvent the canvas to yeah, see what you are drawn to. Exactly. And I asked myself a little bit of, well, what am I drawn to visually? Like if I were just to look at a scene, what what does that look like to me? And it was always a center composition with a square frame around it. And I thought, well, if it's a square, you get rid of that ratio. I can see any, I, I don't see the medium. I, I see the message to quote a famous person. But so I thought, why not? You know, I'll just I'll stick with it, and it's become how I see now. Like everything I see, it's always a square. Like how am I gonna put that in a square frame? And, and then so even your panoramics. Exactly. I love, love, love creating three images to put together, but I always make sure that they're three separate squares so that when I go to an exhibition or something, it's three separate framed prints on the wall that go together as you look yeah. across it. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I like it a lot. Thank you so much, Brooke. Uh, check us out here next time. I'm gonna continue my discussion with Brooke, but we're on a whole different topic. We're talking about post-processing in detail. And while you're coming back here on Adorama TV, don't forget to subscribe. There's a ton of information on this site.